Hello everyone, this is John Blackstone with Only Kid with a Camera. Hey, it's been a while since I put a video out and I wanted to let you know that I'm working on two really cool projects. I'm not going to tell you right now who they're with, but they're going to be interviews and they're both with people that were major insiders in the music industry and I'm really excited about it and I will be putting up some news soon about it, but a little bit too early yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is a little dry. I need to get a, a drink here, just a second. Ah, much better, much better. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot the uh, my new only kid with a camera cups. Sorry, that was really bad. A story I've been wanting to tell for a long time, and I decided to finally do it today. This is a great story. I'm going to take you back to 1979, September 23rd of 1979 to be exact. The place is the Washington State Fair in Puyallup, Washington. Huge fair. Everybody goes to it. In 1979, I had been playing music with my friends Bruce and Scott for maybe a year by that time. We were really into music, and, and I, I was just starting to grow out my hair for the first time. I was just kind of a young hippie. <laughs> Even though it was the, it was way past the days of the hippies, I was a late blooming hippie at the time that the Washington State Fair was happening. Leif Garrett was going to come and do a performance. I don't know if everyone will remember Leif Garrett, but certainly some of you ladies will remember him. He was a major pop star and one of those guys that was on the cover of Teen Beat magazine and Sixteen magazine. Very, very popular. I had been told one or two times before that I looked just like him. And my friend Bruce and I, being the, the devious little schemers that we were, we decided to go to the Puyallup Fair and just, you know, kind of see what happened, you know? I knew that I did kind of look like him. I haven't really realized until now how much I really looked like him. And so here we go. Bruce and I go to the Washington State Fair, and no sooner had Bruce and I approached the ticket counter, I just started noticing teenage girls looking at me, and I could see them kind of kind of looking, you know, kind of like eventually would see some of them point, like, you know, talking and pointing, and it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that it was going to be a fun day, <laughs> especially for a 16-year-old. I had never really been popular with girls, uh, as some of you know from watching my video I made about my past experience with depression and addiction. You'll know that when I was in junior high, I was really quite overweight. I was kind of picked on a lot. I was bullied. and But when I hit puberty, I lost all that weight. I started growing my hair. All of a sudden, I, for the first time in my life, I was kind of starting to get attention from girls, but I was still very much kind of an outcast, even in my school, because my friends and I, Bruce and Scott and the guys I played music with and all of our friends that were kind of part of our little clique, we were all into music and we had long hair and this was like the 19, the beginning of the 1980s, long past the hippie thing, but we were coming to school like looking like hippies in, in tie-dye shirts and beads and all that kind of stuff. But we were very much out of our time. I never ha was able to tell whether girls were interested in me or not anyway, so it was probably a good thing. I'm just saying that for some context. Here I am at this state fair, and literally everywhere I turn, there are girls paying attention to me. Eventually, one of them came up to Bruce and I, and I could tell that they were just dumbfounded because they knew that Leif Garrett wouldn't just be walking around the fair, but I looked so much like him that, that <laughs> they had to inquire what was going on. So Bruce and I came up with the idea of saying that I was Leif Garrett's brother. So that's what we started telling these girls as they would come up and, and ask us. I was getting phone numbers. <laughs> really cute girls and, and I was like Bruce and I were in heaven oh this was the other thing we came up with the idea that Bruce was my personal assistant <laughs> Leif is going to be playing a show later that evening starting at 7 p.m. so all day we're enjoying the attention of girls and just really milking it for all it was worth just to get that kind of female attention at 16 years of age was pretty amazing for one day I was feeling you know what it was like to be in that that place, you know, where girls were just so attracted. And so eventually we made our way to 
the arena, there was a, a massive line of girls already, basically outside and around the arena. Girls were flipping out. They were Some of them were screaming. I was causing chaos everywhere I went. But this was all very planned out. We, we schemed this before we would take each step. We walked up to the front of the line where the security guards were, and there were police there. As pre-planned, I said, I'm Leif Garrett's brother. I'm just trying to get back in. <laughs> and I remember that one of the guys said, well, where's your security pass? <laughs> I just like, oh, I, I just, I left it in there or something like that. So that's when girls in the line started kind of calling out, let him in, let him in. He's Leif's brother. So with that coaxing from the girls, unbelievably, they let us in. So there was nobody in the arena. It was, they hadn't even started letting people in yet. And so the, the stage was being set up. It was just shortly after Bruce and I walked into the arena that they started actually letting the girls in. So this place was filling up fast with girls. And Bruce and I were kind of like, okay, where else can we go with this? How, how far can we take it? <laughs> Typical of Bruce and I. So we decided to go up and try and make contact with his management, Leif Garrett's management. There was kind of an inner sanctum, you know, the backstage area that was closed off and we did not have passes. We approached that area. And when you get down to that point, then the security gets really serious. So the guy was immediately eyeing me kind of like confused as everyone else was. And I, I walked up to him and I said, I just need to get back to see Leif. And he said, who are you? And I said, I'm Leif's brother. <laughs> so he said, where are your backstage passes? And I, we said the same thing. Oh, we just, I just left him in there. So the guy says, hold on here a minute. He walks back. And this is when Bruce and I were really nervous. We were like, kind of like, oh, we kind of, we pushed this really far. What's going to happen here? But we were willing to, <laughs> willing to go with it. The guy comes back with very obviously Leif Garrett's manager. He just had that look. This is the manager guy glasses, sunglasses, you know, immaculate suit. He just walks right up to me and he goes, he goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm, I'm here to see uh, Leif. And he said, who are you? And I said, I'm Leif's brother. <laughs> the guy kind of chuckled and he just shook his head and he goes, Leif Garrett doesn't even have a brother. <laughs> so we were busted. That was the end of it. Immediately, the manager told the security guy, get these kids out of here. All of a sudden, we had police around us, four or five policemen, and they had to escort us out of the arena. And girls were starting to like try to get at us. These police officers were not quite like surrounding us but we're definitely like protecting us and kind of making sure we got out of there. <laughs> 16 year old kid. <laughs> the manager had said, get, get them out of here. So then the police officers took us outside of the arena and walked us all the way through the, the fairgrounds, which was quite a long walk. The whole way girls were running after us. They were chasing. They weren't like crazy, like the way a girl would be if it was really Leif Garrett and they were absolutely sure. But man, they were <laughs> like, imagine the mania if I had been Leif Garrett and then cut it down to about half. That's kind of what it was like. But it was plenty for us. <laughs> so the police seemed kind of mad. They weren't taking it very well because it was a hassle for them. Once they got us out, one of them said, I'll never forget it, the look on his face. He said, I want you kids to get out of here and do not come back. <laughs> Bruce and I walked out and we just laughed and we just couldn't believe that that we even got that far. Waited about 15 minutes and <laughs> went right back in, <laughs> of course. So here's where the story gets really crazy. In my high school, I was taking a photography class. I took a lot of art courses in, in, in high school. It's actually how I managed to graduate high school because that's what I was into. I loved it. Failed pretty much all the other subjects because I couldn't care less at the time. I was uh, smoking pot for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the time. And so, but you can do art when you're, you know, when you're stoned. And one day I'm watching this girl. I had never spoken to her. And this girl was, was really cute. And I remember, you know, she was one of the girls in that class that I used to kind of pay attention to. But she would not give me the time of day. Never said a word to me, which was always the case with the girls that I was interested in. But I was watching her develop a picture and then she pulled the picture out and it was this odd image. And I was like, what, what is that? And she handed me a black and white print of the photo that you see on the screen right now. She was making an enlargement. She was at the Puyallup Fair 
this close and took this photo through the heads of the girls, as you can see, the back of the girls' heads illuminated by the, the flash of the camera. What you see behind me is the canopy, part of the outdoor stage. That is me talking to one of the girls that's waiting to get into the arena. That was right before Bruce and I went into the arena. That's when these girls were saying, let him in. He's Leif's brother. <laughs> Good thing none of the girls there knew that Leif didn't have a brother. Because <laughs> that would have ruined the whole thing. Anyway, this girl in the photography class says, Oh, I was at the Puyallup Fair when Leif Garrett played. And there was this guy there that looked exactly like Leif Garrett. And some of the girls thought it was Leif Garrett's brother. I'm not sure if he was, but he was so cute. Can you imagine what I'm thinking in this moment? She took a picture of me not even recognizing a person that she'd been in school with. If you can imagine how stunned I was, here's a picture that captures this amazing thing that had happened in my life. Here's this girl who had never paid a lick of attention to me, and she's gushing about this cute guy that looked just like Leif Garrett, the guy standing right in front of her. And she didn't never made the connection. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. Talk about like kind of poetic justice. I said, yeah, I, I, I was there. She said, what, you were there? I said, yeah, that, that's me right there. <laughs> and she, the look on her face, she was like, she was holding the picture. And suddenly this whole look of just, just this kind of disgust mixed with <laughs> profound disappointment came over her. And she just kind of like shook her head and she just handed me this photo. That's how I ended up with this photograph. <laughs> she didn't want it anymore. <laughs> the funniest thing about it is that I had been in class with this girl for a whole semester and had even tried to kind of get her attention at times. She literally could not have been less interested in me. In this moment, I'm suddenly elevated to this higher position because I might be Leif Garrett's brother. But she wasn't even sure if I was Leif Garrett's brother, but it was someone that looked like Leif Garrett. And suddenly that took me from being this nothing in her world to really important. And I've never forgotten that lesson. A good lesson to learn at a young age, that fame and celebrity, it's all totally meaningless. And the, most of the people that are worshiping famous people or just adoring, the kind of people that buy People magazine or, you know, that are just obsessed with this stuff, it's such a shallow, vapid thing. And I've met enough very famous people in my life to know these people are not special. Their talent is no more important than a guy that's talented at mechanics or a guy that's talented at science. It's just that our culture worships people who are talented in the arts. So anyway, that was a really great lesson for me. Certainly one of the greatest days of my teenage years, as you can all imagine. And a little bit of worldly wisdom for a little 16-year-old kid. It was just this wonderful experience of being the center of attention with a bunch of girls that were our age and older, <laughs> believe it or not. I met a couple of girls, got some phone numbers and stayed in touch with some of them. One of them almost kind of became a girlfriend, but she was too far away. And just talk about the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> oh my gosh, especially for someone that young. And it certainly did not discourage me from wanting to continue pursuing this goal of being a musician. If anything, it kind of put more fire in our bellies. It's like, yeah, we got to do this. We got to really, really go for it. Although I can say with honesty that that was never the driving force behind me playing music. Um, but that was a part of it <laughs> for sure. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have these uh, new Only Kid with a Camera t-shirts that I wanted to tell you about too. Kind of cool, huh? Sorry, I'm so cheesy. Just want to thank you all so much. I don't even know what to say. I'm getting so many amazing comments. I really tried to respond to every single one of the comments. I just can't do it. It's overwhelming. There's so many of them that come in. But please know that I've read all of your kind, encouraging, complimentary comments. And it really means a lot to me. And it's really inspired me to keep going. I hope you guys will stay tuned. Please subscribe and you'll receive a notice when my videos come out. Please hit the like button. This is John Blackstone with Only Kid with a camera. Cheers. Cheers.